too. Emmanuel Ray is a British Sri Lankan fashion presenter who won Fashion Icon of the Year at the inaugural Fashion's Finest Awards last Friday. He's the only South Asian to win an award at the event and he's been dedicated, he's dedicated to raising the profile of young Asian professionals trying to make it in the British fashion industry. He's an unusual story coming from war-torn Sri Lanka, beating alcohol addiction, then overcoming the prejudices. Here he is in the studio now. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Narration. Hello, listeners. Fantastic. Listen, thank you very much indeed. What I want you to do oh, is you're welcome. That, Pleasure. Um, <clears throat> you've achieved a lot. We were just chatting there while the track was on. You know, it's really it. funny when people say I've achieved a lot. I've only achieved one-tenth of what I want to achieve. God, so you, you've still got quite a bit of way to go then, haven't you? <laughs> yes, I okay. do. But you just, just tell me now about uh, your background, OK? You came from Sri Lanka. You came from Sri Lanka in 2004. 2004 is when I came here. I actually came here to kind of turn my life around and start a fresh. But um, I, I grew up in a very poor background, um, and then um, we had to live sometimes in the slums, in the shanty towns. Uh, it was a very difficult life, but I had a dream. And my parents, when they realized I had the creative gene, they literally pushed me onto the stage, which was wonderful. So um, when I was 15, I was spotted uh, on the beach by a photographer, and then I became a model. But I think uh, due to all the... Uh, uh, you know, I, I didn't have exactly have a happy childhood, so I had a massive problem with uh, clinical depression. And uh, that led to a Clinical dependence. Clinical depression from a young age? From a young age, yeah. Uh, well, actually, it was, um, first it was just depression as in uh, fear and not being able to speak properly and uh, loads of other ha hassle I had. And at that time, and I think my parents and a lot of others didn't know what was exactly wrong with me. But as I grew up, they, they realized it was a problem with depression. Um, I knew... Um, I had this for a long time, but I just kept avoiding it. But then it turned, uh, you know, being in the modeling industry and uh, with the depression, somehow I ended up uh, relying on drugs and alcohol. So by, by the time I tried to <laughs> quit, it was too late. But uh, yeah, it got to a point where I thought my whole life was over and I ended up in a hospital having attempted suicide. But in then, Sri Lanka? No, here. That Over was here. here yeah. Let me just take it back to Sri Lanka. Okay, so what it was is that you had clinical depression. Yes. Okay, you had a very, very tough upbringing. Yes. Okay, but they knew, your parents knew, people around you knew that you were very creative and that you were spotted on the beach uh, when you were a young man and then what happened was is that uh, they knew that you were going to be something and obviously now you're a model. Yes, I was under, also under a lot of pressure. So uh, that what pressure? also... What pressure? Oh, I just, I don't know, I, just, I was expected to be perfect all the time. and By who? Know, um, by the people I worked with, you know, agencies, um, you know, promoters. Uh, and I was one of the very few Asian models at that time who was just stepping into the industry. And uh, I didn't get many jobs at the beginning because I was... Because in the 90s, the look for a lot of male models was muscular and kind of really butch-looking, whereas I looked very boyish mm. and very young. Um, but the drugs really took over. So I got to a point where I thought... Um, I was trying to hard work on my career and you'd get a big break, but I couldn't because of the drug and alcohol problem. When um, did the drug and alcohol addiction start? What age? Oh, God. Um, I think my mum's listening to this. Yeah. <laughs> She's going to be very yeah. bad. Did you just put started when I was, yeah, started when I was about uh, 15, 16. Right. Yeah. And, uh, but anyway, you know, after I ended up in hospital here, uh, after my second suicide attempt, uh, I got out and I, di I had nowhere to go. I, hadn't, I didn't know what to do. But then I met someone and fell in love, and that's what changed me. So basically, I started off as Emmanuel Ray, the fashion presenter and commentator, in March 2009. Mm -hmm. And I'm very, very lucky to have achieved so much in a short time. Because uh, the, the British public have been incredibly uh, supportive. They've uh, nominated, they nominated me for the award, the Fashion Icon of the Year Award. They voted for me. They follow all my work, my column, my press interviews. And I didn't expect that you know this massive response at the beginning and when the BBC entertainment correspondent Paul Conway named me Britain's first it boy we had a huge amount of interest uh, parties celebrity parties fashion and the fact that I so I started using what I do to show that look I'm, I, I am a representative of multicultural Britain mm -hmm. uh, I have made it here I'm making it here and I like uh, also using my popularity to draw attention towards human rights issues and charitable causes. Emmanuel, you talked about drug and alcohol addiction. Now, mm -hmm. we've seen the unfortunate situation when it came to uh, Amy Winehouse mm -hmm. and what happened there. When you first heard about that, what was your reaction? Um, I felt very upset because I do like her voice and her music. But, you know, I, having come close to that stage... I was literally on that stage, you know, there, was, there were times when I would wake up uh, in a house and not know how I got there. There were times when I would 
fall asleep on the street, all this stuff I've done. So, you know, it, it, it people criticize you about it, uh, people gossip about it, but when you're in that situation, you it, it's, it's a really horrible situation to be in, and you're trying to, you know, uh, get clean, and then you keep getting sucked in back into that, uh, you know, um, hole of uh, depression and drugs and alcohol. But um, I, I felt incredibly sad. My publicist, Philippe Ashfield, also knew her uh, quite well, and uh, I... Um, you know, we, we, it was a very sad day, and um, in a way, I, I, I don't think I should really say this, but to be honest, I, I just felt very thankful that I had managed to overcome my health problems and my drug problems and depression problems because uh, I got so close to staring death in the face. <laughs> Two suicide attempts. <laughs> Two suicide attempts. Uh, a few narrow escapes with bomb attacks in Sri Lanka. Uh, a bad accident which left me in a coma for about two months. Uh, numerous failed relationships, two broken marriages. Um, so basically a lot, yes, a lot. I've been, lived a lifetime already. So I think I've got to 30 now. And suddenly it's like when I've changed my life and I've turned my life around, I've become like a born-again Christian. So when I see my friends who are going to clubs doing drugs, you know, jumping, go, bed hopping and bar hopping basically, I look at them and think, oh, the shame of it. You should be ashamed of yourself. Mm. Don't you ever come and say hi to me again. Mm. <laughs> considering, <laughs> considering what's happened to you over the past few I know. years. But this is a new Emmanuel Ray. I know. And I've become a little bit like, I've almost become like a born-again Christian. Like I'm condemning everyone. And I'm like, oh, shame on you. I'm looking down on them and thinking, oh. <laughs> well, well, what, what about the British fashion industry? Okay. British society accepted you, but what about the British fashion industry? Did they initially accept you? Um, no, of course not, um, because I uh, felt... Because, you know, um, from a very young age, I used to have an interest in psychology and uh, behavioural patterns in, in human beings. is very interesting, because a lot of things are connected to our primal instincts. And I realised that we are very territorial creatures. So when we have somebody else, you know, intruding on our territory and trying to take away from us or trying to achieve something in our territory, we get very, th we feel threatened. Mm -hmm. So we want to fight back. So there were rumours being spread about me. Um, there was really kind of um, nasty, you know, things written about me on the internet. Um, people deliberately not uh, making sure that I would not get into certain parties or the red carpet. But hold um, on, this this is fascinating. So what you're saying to me is, is that was this because of your 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 colour, your what? What was it? I could. I think it's a mixture of a lot of things because in the fashion industry, you get a lot of people who have achieved a lot. They've worked really, really hard to get where they are. They saw you and, as a threat. Yes, as a threat. And I think I can understand that because now when I see people who start... See, I started with nothing and I proved that you can be... I mean, I was named Britain's first it boy and a socialite and I don't come from a privileged background. So once I proved that, now there are others getting in the industry trying to create what I created, which is wonderful. And I say, wow, it's, it's great. I've opened the doors for you. But then inside, I do feel threatened. I think, oh my God, look at that. He's doing what I'm, I did. You know, and I'm like... <laughs> you know, just Emmanuel, get take, take me back to that because you made some really important points. So there you were. It's a you, very natural thing yeah, to feel threatened. You, you arrived. <laughs> you arrived in the British, you know, fashion industry. Yes. Okay. And you were saying that people saw that you could be a possible threat, yes. and things were written about you on the internet yes. to try and push you back, to hold you back, and tr people trying to say, "Listen, he's dodgy. Keep him yeah, one away." Exactly. Really. I mean, even my public. How bad uh, was it? Um, well, I was getting like really nasty text messages and everything. So I would actually reply them with equally nasty texts. And my then agent, Simon Wilson from Express Broadcast, said to me, look, you have to ignore this. He said, you have to ignore this and put all your energy and channel your anger into your career and making it big. And my publicist, Felipe Ashfield, also said to me, um, don't look at anything that's written on the Internet about you. Unless, of course, you you want to look at your pictures and see how good you look. Well, well, what sort of <laughs> so, stuff? What sort of stuff was actually written about you? Oh God, uh, mostly filth. Uh, you know, th pictures from the latter part of my modelling career where I literally took my clothes off for the camera, mm -hmm. uh, have been copied and pasted all over the net. But was this back um, in Sri Lanka then? So this was at the no, early no, no, start he, of your career, or over here? No, 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 here, over here. Right. Because after the modelling career ended, it was very short-lived. Uh, when I turned my life around and it started off as the fashion presenter and commentator and the socialite, uh, that's when all this started popping up. Um, so, in a way, it's all helped my career because my Google rating has just shot up. Because last year, if you Googled Emmanuel Ray, that was very little. Now, but now there's tons. Yeah. But and, then um, people were exploiting those pictures. When you were a model to start off with, what happened no, was... No, no, no. Uh, people were exploiting the pictures that were shot towards the end of my modelling career. Okay, towards the end of the modelling career, when you were taking your clothes off... Yeah, I was just okay. doing it for money, basically. You were doing it for money. You were taking, <laughs> yeah. your, you were taking your clothes off. Yeah. Okay, you were doing it for money. But then people got hold of those pictures. Yes. And they just put them over the internet exactly. to try and discredit you? Yes, uh, but then I turned it to my advantage because I 
said, yes, I've done so many things in the past I'm not proud of, but this is not something I'm uh, ashamed of. I have a nice body. Um, nudity is uh, a completely natural thing to me because, you know, I think I, I just wonder why people keep uh, pushing sex and nudity under the carpet because if not for sex and nudity, I wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be here. Yeah. You're yeah. saying it's an art form, essentially. When yeah, you go